Oh, Daddy's thinking again. I'm going to be using this ball to make a mould to make a very unusual bowl. I did run into quite a few problems and it turned into an epic rescue mission. Stay tuned to see what happened. Several months ago I took these uh, well seasoned yew, yew branches and cut them into discs. I then dried them in the airing cupboard for several weeks. Here I'm chopping up some very cheap pine wood and I'm gluing it all together to make a very enormous blank. This is going to form my resin saver. Just attaching a faceplate using my faceplate jig. And it's onto the lathe, tailstock support, and spindle roughing gouge to round. Just getting it all nice and smooth. And then I've marked out ready to turn a sphere using an easy wood tools easy rougher just to take the ends down and i'm using the uh, octagon sort of mathematical approach to cutting the sphere now uh, you can get um the uh formulae for solving octagons and things on the internet and so you can work out the dimensions so you mark out where your octagon's going to be and then you keep removing the corners until it's round. Just using a spindle gouge. And uh, as I say, keep knocking off those corners until I've got a very good sphere. Using a square nose scraper just to get rid of all the fine edges. It's an extra heavy duty scraper and these things are great a little bit of sanding don't have to go mad this is just the bowl saver now I'm making the base of my bowl out of a, a U log using a spindle roughing gouge truing up the front and uh, just defining that I'm using the uh, easy wood tools uh, carbide parting tool an amazing bit of kit incredibly sharp checking my uh, diameters and putting my dovetail on ready for my chuck jaws That's it. into the chuck jaws then parting off truing up the face and just flattening one end of that sphere ready to glue this base on now I'm using a, a fast set epoxy resin Bringing up the tailstock just to uh, hold it in place while it's set. And once it's set, just truing it up again. And here I'm coating all that pine with some uh, epoxy finishing resin. This is the, the, a couple of days later when it's fully cured and I'm just denibbing it. Here I'm using uh, painter's tape to glue those uh, U discs that are now dry. I'm just doing a test pattern with the tape, make sure they all fit round, which they do. And I'm then gluing those on with epoxy, making sure they're well coated. And using the uh, painter's tape to hold them in place while they set. That's the first layer done. I'll then uh, decide I need to seal all these discs so I'm using that epoxy finishing resin again and I'm just sealing all the discs I've already uh, cemented on and I'm also sealing the ones I'm about to glue on. Once they're dried I work my way around and I glue them all into place so they're already sealed now. This stops the resin saver and the U discs absorbing too much of the resin when I cast it. Here I'm cutting open that basketball, uh, creating a hole that will fit the tenon uh, exactly on the base of the bowl. And then cutting some slots up the side. And that presses onto there and it's quite a struggle to do this. I made quite a few relieving cuts so that I could get it nice and snug around the uh, the U discs. And now I'm using tons of hot glue to seal it all 
and Gorilla Tape. Done a little test piece of resin there. There we go, MBFG Opti Opticast 2000. Weighing that out very accurately. Mixing it thoroughly. And adding some amber translucent pigment. I'm mixing all that in. I'll leave details in the description about the resin I'm using. I've made a makeshift funnel. And I'm then pouring this resin in to the uh, into the mould I've created with the basketball keeping my fingers crossed that I've sealed it all then it's into the pressure pot for a few hours pressuring it to 60 psi and uh, when it's fully cured keeping my fingers and toes crossed I undo it and uh, I was just showing here that the uh, pressure pot was in a heated cabinet to make sure it um, cured properly. It was quite a struggle pulling this off. I was hoping to be able to reuse the uh, the ball, but um, there's another mould another day, but I ended up completely destroying it in the process of removing it. But I was delighted with how that came out. Couldn't have wanted that better. And anyway, it's back on the lathe truing up that tenon again just removing the uh, hot glue taking the uh, face plate off and mounting it in the chuck jaws via the tenon the u tenon in the base of the bowl and uh, here i'm starting to um, bring it to round and i'm using a, an easy with tools negative rake tip um, cutter here See, I'm gradually getting it rounder and rounder. Then we're using um, an easy finisher, negative rake one. And I'm just doing some finishing cuts here. These negative rake tips are fantastic. No chipping out at all. Then sanding from 120 to 400. And that's what it looks like. It's all cleaned up. Spray sanding sealer from Chestnut Products. I put two coats of that all over it just to seal up that wood. And then Yorkshire Grip, original and microfine. Start with the uh, original and are working and working it with a leather pad until it gets finer and finer. And then buff all that away. And you can see the result you get. You know, this is after I've also used the microfine, Yorkshire Grip microfine. It's time to do some hollowing. So, uh, a little bit of slow mo here, just where I'm removing the uh, stalk. Number one hollower from Easywood Tools. And just uh, removing all that pine from my resin. Yes, the resin saver. It's just sacrificial pine. So that I don't use as much resin. It's also very easy to hollow hollow out the pine. It makes a mess, but um, you know it's uh, easy to hollow. Just doing some deep hollowing here with the Hope um, Pro Hollower. And then going back in with a negative rake finisher from Easywood Tools. And what I'm doing here is gradually removing the chipped out... Uh, resin on the inside and you can see you're doing some deep hollowing the problem is the moment you are doing deep hollowing or overhanging the tool rest you will get chipping out I'm hoovering out the uh, the resin and the dust and there you can see it's coming on and here I'm doing a dodgy manoeuvre really don't try this this is what happened I had a catch, caught the uh, shaft of the tool on the rim of the bowl and it went bang. Unfortunately, I turned my uh, camera off because I was tired and was about to go in and I thought, well, just one more cut and look what happened. What an idiot. That's a load of rubbish, Daddy. Interesting how all the uh, bits of wood have split through the pith. Um, it's the line of weakness uh, and in fact it is the pith that has dictated where all the cracks go it's gone through the pith on just every piece 
which is quite amazing. Um, the resin itself is so strong, really strong. I'm not sure what to do at this stage. I'm feeling very fed up. I think you know, the first thing I did was I started gluing the pieces together. And uh, there it is, that's the, the missing piece. And then I sort of just placed it back together and was contemplating the best thing to do. I left it alone for a while and then uh, came back to it and decided that it was not really repairable, not safely. So I cut the rim where the rim was already turned to make it look like a more random fractured pattern. Uh, so I'm just cutting away a few bits here um, with a saw just so I'm getting that random pattern continuing around. I didn't want that uniform rim still there. Using my Dremel with a saber tooth burr. Just completing the finished shape of the edge. And there you go, it gives you an idea. I then have to complete what I couldn't do on the lathe because I couldn't turn it anymore. I've got to get rid of all the ridges and chip out and cut the resin back to the U as well. Uh, and it took an awful lot of sanding with 80 grit and hand sanding and finally I did uh, fine sanding and then we're back to the uh, cellulose sanding se sealer from Chestnut Products a couple of coats of that and then Yorkshire grit again uh, original and microfine and I'm using a polishing mop on my drill yeah, I'm over to the microfine now and uh, because it's not on the lathe, like I say, I'm using a mop on a drill. Uh, and then a different mop with a bit of Vonax buffing compound. Just to give it that glassy look. And uh, parting off here with a saw. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I've finally completed this pig of a project which has been going on for months um it was looking really promising and then i uh, had that rather nasty catch and it was at a time when i'd uh, decided i'd had enough i was very tired and I, th I thought right i'm going in now so i turned off the cameras turned uh, everything off and, uh, and then i thought well i'll just turn that little bit there and uh Managed to just catch the handle on the rim and it really went bang. Uh, anyway, I've uh, kind of rescued it. Um, so it's now a sort of a very odd shaped bowl, but it's got its artistic merit, I suppose. This has been doomed from the start, really. The eagle eyed amongst you might see a couple more cracks. That's because I just dropped it. Uh, I mean, I just, you couldn't make it up, really. Um, but uh, there it is, all finished. U and polyurethane resin, amber coloured. And uh, I've got a pretty good finish on it now. It's, um, it's come up quite glass-like. Uh, and the U works well with the amber. But I'll put some stills up and a uh, turntable shot, if I can find my turntable amongst all the dust. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you liked it. I'll be back soon with some more simplistic projects. As I said, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll try and do some less complicated projects over the next couple of ones. Um, but I uh, hope you liked it. I, I was pleased with how it came out. I was very cross that I managed to uh, drop it and crack it again. But uh, yeah, I, I quite like the design and other people have seen it really uh, quite taken by the design and uh, thought that was how it was meant to be anyway it is what it is and thanks again for watching please like share and subscribe it costs nothing to subscribe and a massive thank you to all my subscribers you can also check me out on facebook and instagram more rubbish coming soon don't forget Makers Central this year, 11th and 12th of May at the NEC in Birmingham. Go to the website and check it out. You can book stands and buy tickets. 
and it'll be great to see you all there. I've put various links in the video description, so why not take a look?